Hi, I'm Brad with Arts Gun Shop. Today we're going to show you kind of an oddball shotgun that Browning made called a Browning Double Automatic. Some people refer to it as a Double Auto. Um, it's kind of a goofy gun. It was invented by Val Browning, who was John Moses' Browning's son. So he had some big shoes to fill. And this is how he tried to do it, apparently. Uh, we're going to go through the guns, show you how they work, and kind of the history of them. Kind of Let's go ahead and start with the years of production. They started building these guns in 1952, and production ceased in 1971. After this video clip, we're going to put up a serial chart so you can date your own guns. But there's a couple things. One, if it has an A in the serial number, that means that you have an aluminum receiver and it's a lightweight model. And if you have a C, it's made out of steel. The other way you can tell is if you put a magnet to it. If you put a magnet to steel, it sticks. If you put it to aluminum, it doesn't do anything. Now, the advantage to having one anodized, there's a couple things. One, um, it's a, it, aluminum oxide is extremely hard. It's a very durable coat. The other thing is it's a porous material. So it allows the guns to take color and be sealed. So you can do them in green, red, blue. Let's go ahead and put up a serial chart. We'll show you the, you know, uh, the serial number so you can date your own gun, and then I'll jump into the colors. That serial chart was given to me by Lenny Reeves, the Browning historian. He retired a couple of weeks ago. We want to give him a special shout out and say thank you for supplying us that chart and we wish him well in his retirement. Now let's jump over to the colors. The colors were, um, let's see here, the four production colors were dragon black, velvet gray, autumn brown, and forest green. I happen to have a forest green one here, kind of give you a shot of what that looks like. Uh, after they anodized them and they colored them, there was some very rare ones. There was a royal blue and ox blood red. They're extremely rare. You hardly ever see one. Um, but the four production colors, those are the most common. Uh, that being said, they did also have the steel receiver, and that was just blued, obviously. Um, here in a second, I'm going to put up a picture. Uh, years ago, we set up a display for the Brandon Collectors Association, and one of our customers was kind enough to let us use his collection. And uh, I'm going to show you all the, all the colors that they made and uh, give you a picture. The Browning Double Auto came out with barrels from 26 to 30 inches. Um, let's start with the plain barrels. Exactly what it sounds like. They had no rib, there's nothing to them. These are the cheapest and the easiest ones to find. But, uh, yeah, nothing to it, just a plain barrel. Now, the most collectible, in my opinion, and my favorite, are the vent ribs. The vent ribs are very distinct looking. The way the rib comes down and drops through for the barrel to cycle, uh, it's kind of a distinct look barrel. If you're at a gun show and you see one, you'll know what it's to. Uh, but I think that looks the best on these old shotguns. Now, distinctive to the double auto was the channel rib. And the channel rib is exactly what it sounds like. There's a groove cut in that rib that runs the entire length of the barrel. They did it to make it lighter, and it's kind of a unique sighting plane. But Browning only did that on the double autos. It's kind of a unique feature. Um, it's not my favorite, but it's pretty uh, sought after by the collector. So if you're at a gun show and you see the vent rib or the channel rib barrel, snatch them up. They're good investments. Uh, now, I don't have one here, but they also made a slug barrel. And slug barrel is just like for the A5s. It would have the blade on the front, and it would have your adjustment on the rear sight, and they were shorter. Um, if you ever see one, snatch them up. They're hard to find, and you just can't beat them. They're, they're just great for a collector. Oh, and let's go ahead and show you how to take the barrel off. Take off the barrel. You'll lock back your bolt. On the bottom, you'll see this little notch here. Pull it down, and then... Pull down on your form. Sometimes they need a little bit of help. Slides right on out. And that's how you take apart the barrels. Uh, easy to do, to put it back on, same thing. Now these guns also had another unique feature. The safety on them is ambidextrous. Whether you're right or left-handed, uh, that was kind of a unique feature of the gun. If you look real carefully here at the bottom, 
It's a very simple design on how the safety operates. When you put it all the way down to the bottom, stops the, stops the trigger. Push up towards the gun, takes the trigger off. Uh, very simple, but it's nice for right and left handed people. Now, the nice thing about these old shotguns, they didn't make many of them. They only made 67,000, roughly. Uh, commercially, they were really a disaster from the standpoint of production numbers. Compared to like the A5, there's over 3 million A5s floating around. Um, the guns never took off in popularity, which is a shame because they're fantastic. The recoil is far less than you would think for such a light gun. Uh, they're very reliable. Uh, they're handy now. Kind of a unique piece. Uh, some gun shoots for double gun or over under shoots will allow these into the shoots, even though it's a semi automatic because it's a two shot. Some gun clubs will allow those in those special shoots. It's the only semi auto that I know that's allowed in them sometimes. Uh, they're written into the bylaws, and that's kind of a goofy thing about these shotguns. Um, so there was low production numbers. If you're a brand new collector, you should throw one in the collection just to have because they're such an oddball thing. Uh, if you're out in the field, they're fantastic. And it's a shame because they never took off in popularity. I've always joked around calling them the El Camino of the shotgun world. It really wasn't an over-under, and it really wasn't a semi-auto in the sense. Uh, but it had some pretty stiff competition from itself, of course, with Browning Super Pose and the, and the Auto 5. Uh, both those fan bases were very loyal to their guns, and I think that's why they didn't really take off. Plus, with having the aluminum receiver, they were ahead of their time for something built back in the 50s. Um, it, it's just a shame they never took off, but if you're a Browning collector, you should throw one in there. There it covers your history, the colors on them. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, anything else, pick up the phone, give me a call, or shoot me an email. Thank you.